flight to Rome. Well, we're on the first leg to Atlanta. It like really has not hit us that we are going to Italy right now. Really wrong. <laughs> Apparently Italy. Waiting for our flight to Rome, so we're of course having lots of wine. Headed to our gate to board the flight. It's January 1st. We just landed in Rome. Happy New Year. It smells like a different country, and I love that. The guy in immigration was like, if you want to party in Roma, go to Sunny Beach. <laughs> I was like, thanks. Sunny Beach. Sunny, Sunny oh. Beach. I don't know what that There's is. There's no beach here. It's a land. Like I mean, maybe it's a club. I don't know. We out here in Roma. This is surreal. We can't check into our hotel yet, so we're just walking around, heading to the Spanish Steps to chill and have some lunch and an apérol spritz, of course. Speak for yourself. Get a glass of ice. <laughs> All right, we are fresh and ready to go for our first night in Rome. Seeing it in real life just doesn't compare to pictures. Found a cute little spot in the piazza to have an Aperol. I love the vibe. Found a random local piazza. Not a single person speaks English here. It's a very local restaurant called Osteria de la Copella in, uh, I don't know what the name of the piazza is, but it's lovely. Super interesting dish. It's a gigantic piece of toast with pepperoncinis on it, but it's so tasty. Olive oil and really crunchy, sweet pepperoncinis. Okay, no one told me that Rome is literally all hills, so it's legitimately uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill, which I guess is a good thing, because I am burning my meals. We're on that Roman schedule, starting the day at 11 a.m. I have serious goosebumps looking at so much history. Oh my god, this is stunning. Bernini himself was here 400, 500 years ago. Incredible. Piazza, Piazza Navona is so famous is because it was originally constructed as a rectangular shape to allow athletes to compete back in the day. This is like where athletic competitions would take place in ancient Rome.
We're crossing the Tiber River and we have entered Trastevere. So excited. Immediately, you feel how local it is. It's so nice. It's so relaxed. It's perfect. So we found a ginoteria in Trastevere. Cheers. <laughs> Bruschetta. Oh my god. Tomatoes are my favorite. Like I eat tomatoes like they're apples. And this is one hell of a juicy tomato. Mmm, yeah. How's the Negroni? It's really good. Alright, so review of that place was that it was really good, but definitely was not the best pizza you will have in Italy. Uh, I'm a little confused about how critically acclaimed it is, but nevertheless, it was good. It was a good place to check out. Better than Domino's. Definitely better than Domino's. <laughs> it was a good day. It was nice getting out of the city center and seeing a totally local side of Roma. So Vishal's been to Rome four times and he got to experience Trastevere for the first time today with me. And that was really special. It was fun. It was awesome. It's like a mix of West Village and Soho, right? Something like that. Italy day two. Wow, this is incredibly majestic. My goodness, the sheer grandeur. Holy shit. Topics in mind that they want to bring up in high court. 
my guy Marcus Rilius is calmly sitting on his horse. You know, chill, chill, people, one at a time. You know, it's just cool. It's just it is cool to walk in the steps of history. So apparently it's good luck if you get a coin on this little stump here and Vishal is going to attempt to do it. Let's go. You got it? Oh man. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the irony of life right now. That was without a doubt the best meal I've had in Rome in the last 72 hours. And of course, it's not Italian food, but it is my favorite sushi. We are headed to Campo di Fiori this morning after a lovely, simple breakfast. And I'm really excited to see this market. <laughs> what is this one? Pasta, Oh, it's okay. Perfect. Not spicy at all. For me, yes. Oh, really? On our way to Florence. I'm so pumped! Florence is the city that I am most excited about. On the train. Florence, here we come. so good to be back in Florence. This is definitely one of my favorite cities in the entire world. I've been here three times, all by myself or with my family. And so it feels really special to finally be here with Sammy. So we're grabbing aperitivo at Sant'Ambrogio, which is a place that Michelle told me about 10 years ago. We came here with the boys multiple times. We're back here together. Okay, 
So we're starting with a uh, classic white wine, not too acidic, not too fruity. This is the first time in my life eating chicken liver. I'd probably get everything on the menu. <laughs> if I had a choice. The lemon sorbet. Yeah, yeah, let's get the turn. <laughs> okay. Are you sure? Should we get two things? No, 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 no. We're back at our hotel enjoying a nightcap before going to bed. The view from the rooftop of our hotel is absolutely stunning. You can see all of Florence. a very relaxing morning just totally sleeping in and chilling and now we're gonna start our day with a Florentine burger and then we are going to our pizza making class in Tuscany. Michelle is deathly hungover today. We're having lunch at a organic farm-to-table restaurant. What's really cool about this place is that they source all of their materials from local Tuscan farmers and producers. And on the menu, they actually list the farm that the item is from. And then in the back, they tell you about that farm. Gelato. You're supposed to put 
back in the city after a wonderful experience in the countryside with our cooking class. So today is a national holiday in Italy called Epiphany and the city definitely feels quieter, but I kind of love it. Making our way onto Ponte Vecchio, which is the famous market on a bridge here in Florence. Oh my god, this is legit like an 11.1 incline on the treadmill to get up to Piazza di Michelangelo. Oh, I hope the view is worth it. It will be. This walk is symbolic of life. You have to walk uphill to face the challenges. But when you reach the pinnacle, it's worth a struggle. The hills are alive. That was really bad. That was really cheesy. I'm so sorry. We've come here to see fake David. We're going to see real David tomorrow. You can see real David right now. Call me Michelangelo. That was a perfect way to start the day. I am ready and energized for all the other sites. I really thought that the entire city was gonna be closed today because of the holiday, but literally the city is totally open. 30 minute walk later, our next stop is the Dumo. Oh, wow. The intricacy of this architecture is just like mind-boggling. I don't understand how they did this like 700 years ago when they had no tools. It took 123 years and several generations of architects to finish it. Such a good husband for coming on this gluten free journey with me. This is the best prosciutto I've had in my life. And it's gluten free. So this has Sibricolina honey and baked peppers with of course pecorina cheese. I got my sandwich fix. We were seated in a previous archaeological site. Like, how dope is that? It was excavated in the early 1990s, and they decided that there was nothing important to Florence history. They decided to allow Florentine business owners to take over that space. Italy, day six. Had a delicious breakfast at a cafe. We've made it to the beautiful Palace PT. The Medici's once lived here. Keeping up with the Medici's. You see that white horse that Lorenzo got? <laughs> this is 
is the courtyard that overlooks the Baboli Garden, and all the windows are of the Medici family members. I feel like I'm in Bridgerton right now. So this area was called the Gentleman's Castle because all the men would come up here and hang out and do shit that they didn't want women to see. The conclusion after seeing the palace is that it's a very interesting place in history, absolutely, but you feel a heaviness when you're there. You feel that energy and all the conflict that this family had trying to maintain power for as many years as possible. They really let their egos run wild. You know, that's just not what life's about. Life's about getting freedom from your ego, not being imprisoned by it. It's a rainy afternoon in Florence. The rain makes the day feel even more romantic. We popped into a lovely Pomodoro restaurant to grab a quick lunch before we go see the amazing David. Spaghetti aglio Wait, wait. Spaghetti aglio olio. Yes. Florence knows how to do food. We just made it to Galleria de Academia. We just made it to Galleria Academia. Going back to my musical roots by seeing one of the first violins ever made. I can't believe that he was carved from a single piece of marble. It took Michelangelo three years to carve him. Here's the backside of David. He's got a nice butt. Michelle is seriously sipping on David. <laughs> the thing that we saw, that's the satchel. That's the weapon that he was... That he beat hurt. Goliath with. No, yeah. there's nothing in it. He doesn't beat Goliath with the weapons. He no, has, he uses he intelligence. Has the, no, he has the power from God. That's the whole story. It's the faith and power of God. I am completely in awe of David. Just absolutely marveled by the genius of Michelangelo grateful to have such artists that walked before us and created so much beauty and art in our world. I wish I had talent like that in art. It's one of the things I always dream of, but it's not meant to be in this life. <laughs> this is definitely a paint me like one of your French girls moments. Even his sculpture looks absolutely crazy, like he's scheming to do something absurd. One last look at David. Just had an amazing, amazing massage. You know, the Asians always know how to do it. They really do. Vishal's hidden talent is finding secret local bars for us to chill at. It legitimately feels like we're eating Truffle ravioli with the pomodoro garlic spaghetti. But it's actually a spaghetti called bichi, which is a lot thicker than typical linguine that you would see in the United States. That was the absolute best last meal in Florence we could have eaten. Day seven, Italy.
So today we're headed to a mall in the mountains. It's a gigantic designer outlet mall here in Florence and I'm super excited to check it out. Michelle's been talking about this place for 10 years and of course the first place that I'm going to head up is Gucci. So we've made it to the mall and there is a long ass line for Gucci already and the mall hasn't even opened yet. This is going to take a hot second but I'm ready. purchase of the day complete. Got my Gucci. Got some dope Gucci high top sneakers. Successful mall trip. Headed back to Florence. What a fun day. Made it to Venice. the way Michelle is <laughs> drinking his coffee. I don't have a choice. Italy day eight. Let's go. Starting our first day off in Venice. I'm not gonna lie, it is pretty cold here. It's the coldest city that we're visiting. It's like 40 and you can see my breath, but it's actually really refreshing to be around water after being in two landlocked cities previously. Venice is very, very, very old, but I'm excited to discover it. Michelle being my official umbrella boy. Uh. Michelle, how are you feeling crossing the bridge? I feel good. <laughs> I don't know. It's like whatever. It's like crossing a bridge. <laughs> anywhere. The traditional hangout thing to do in Venice is to have chiquetti and wine. So we're at a local spot right now having some wine and some chiquetti, which is basically bread with fresh meat on top and it's delicious. The truth is, as we walk around this city, I feel quite indifferent towards it, you know? I'm sure the weather has a little bit to do with this feeling of indifference. I'm still glad. 
glad I got to see it. We are headed to get to our tour for the Vatican. I am so excited. This is my number one thing in Rome and I cannot wait to see it. I've been obsessed with the history of the Vatican ever since I read Angels and Demons in high school. And then I actually did the work and I read all about the true history of how it came to be in Christianity. And it is so, so, so exciting to be able to go and see it in person now. We're officially inside a new country called the Vatican. So we're starting with the Vatican Museum. We just finished up the Vatican tour. It was amazing. A place that I've wanted to go to since I was a kid. I've studied it and I've always dreamt of coming here. learning about the history of Michelangelo not only as an artist but also as an as a person he was a very cranky stubborn little man and him and Raphael went head to head in competitiveness while they were creating all the art within the Vatican when they were both commissioned by the papacy I also loved Raphael's paintings honestly more than Michelangelo which is shocking but Raphael's paintings to me were so powerful and strong and solid and just like so clear. I want to paint it. I wish I was like Michelangelo and I could just create a fresco right here right now. I'm so inspired. In the Vatican, something that they kept saying that Vishal and I both really loved was that It's that your appearance is reflected by your nature. Your appearance is reflected by your nature. 2023 is officially the year of Vishal's renaissance. A renaissance. <laughs> had my cafe latte and I'm ready to stop the day. Coliseum, we're coming for ya.
We just finished up the Coliseum and the Forum tour. We learned a lot. Like this trip has just been so amazing from a historical standpoint. I wish that it was still a pagan temple though. Like it's cool to see the Christian side of it, but I would have loved to see the original Roman temple that it was when Hadrian built it in the first century. Final evening in Roma. Seen everything, local, amazing restaurants, all the touristy stuff. I'm ready to go home. And since we're still in Rome, salute. Arrivederci Italia.